So, why do I avoid expat drama? Um, logically, it's often because two and two equals five. Because what, <laughs> what you have is different people's opinions expressed as fact. Um, as the saying goes, there's two sides to every story and then there's the truth. But on top of that, um, some of the guys around are just not right. I'm, that's all I can say on it. Um, if you take my troll, um, I'm not about Jeff, you know, because if you can't see through Jeff, then what? I'll leave that to you. Um, but the other troll, uh, which is this Ivan Iliadis guy, if you Google VAP, um, which is the Village Aid Project, Bahol, even early Adas, you will see the stuff he was trolling many years ago. Um, and he was even trolling before that. Because he used to do it on Yahoo forums. Um, I wasted enough time looking at this guy and you get to the point where you sit in there going, what's the point? I, this guy has obviously got problems with whatever. Um, if he... You can see it the way he writes this stuff, but if you look at the Village Aid Project, you look at the fact that these people are part of a Rotary Club, they're involved in charitable organisations and blah, 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 and he's accused them of all sorts. And that goes back years. Um, now, I find it bizarre that, A, he didn't realise that when he received an award off the guy he was working with, but also if there was something untoward there, why hasn't anything been done? Why is it only him? Why is it only him that's had an issue with it? I haven't heard anybody else mention a word about it. And I've been on the hall myself, and I've spoken to people, members of the Rotary, I've spoken to members of the uh, Lions, and nobody even knows him. I mean, that, this guy boasts of this sort of stuff, but at the same time, yeah, I can't find a thread of truth in anything. Um... I'm going to put Chris Bennett's video on here as well um, because you will understand from Chris's point of view because Chris used to be a, uh, the president of the Rotary on MacTan. Now, I didn't meet Chris till years later um, and it's all because of this troll that many expats have actually spoken to each other because bizarrely, we didn't know each other and neither did the troll. The troll's never met any of the people he trolls about. Um, except for the one guy who spent two weeks on holiday with that he waited to France to write about. But generally, there is nothing connecting any people together, but you will find the way that the troll writes. He will use the same references to things people were getting up to and whatever, and it's just lots of rubbish. But also, it's not even creative in the sense that he has to use the same lines for different people. Um, so it's just a bit of a wasted, wasted journey, and that's why, quite simply, I don't waste my time on the drama. Um, there is no point. There is no proof there. there. I mean, as he said, proofs with an S, um, because there was nothing ever done. It's just all made up by himself. It's all in his own little world. Um, why he's got an issue with so many people, I have no idea. Um, I haven't met the guy, no interest in meeting him, um, but that, that's the reality. On the other side of this, there is stuff that goes on between people where they start off with falling out. Um, there's some stuff going on, funny enough, in Bahol at the moment between two expats relating to some charity stuff. Um, that is to do with personal arguments and personal disputes and my personal view on that is keep it offline um sort it out between yourselves if you don't want to talk to each other it's fine but all that's going to happen is you both could come out damaged um online <laughs> and on top of that there's people quite happily stoking the fire that want to stir it like no tomorrow please just sort it out um, I mean, I, I put the video out, The One Day Millionaire, which sort of explains my my viewpoint on 
this sort of assumption, not only I have, but also I was talking to, it was Jay that actually pointed out, because I was just trying to concentrate on what was going on, because I don't really for, follow um, the events too much. But um, it certainly seemed that a lot of people come out of the woodwork and suddenly seeing there's money available. So you've got to understand a lot of that's cultural. A lot of that goes on on a regular basis. And I've had people already comment saying, but that doesn't go on and lose on or whatever. I would beg to differ. <laughs> differ. <laughs> it goes on everywhere. Um, and it's not just the Philippines. You see, if somebody won the lottery, how many people appear? Um, the, every charity's phoning them up and everything else, all wanting a bit of the pie. So it's not as straightforward as uh, nobody's, nobody's, uh, nobody does it. It's only relevant to the Philippines because reality is, it's not. <laughs> it's not. Anywhere there's a big cash sum come up, um, there is always going to be somebody looking for their share. Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. But yeah, I don't bother getting in the expat drama. Can't be bothered with it. Um, that says, unless you've got all the facts there. But even then, it doesn't really matter. If they're not doing anything wrong, um, <coughs> does it matter? The answer is no. Um, yeah. Oh, somebody did mention about my $10,000 income a week. Uh, the reality is, because it keeps going up, and I'm getting fed up with saying it, but the reality is, we were making good money back then. We bought our building, paid for a call center, paid for the renovations, everything else. If you went through the, the just even the uh, the sums, you would see it, it's basically there. You know, um, I'm not going into my own finances of that. That's quite simply nobody else's business. <laughs> but at the same time, we paid for everything. We've got all this. Um, that we bought, renovated, etc. Had forty-five employees, etc. So beyond that, I don't think it's anybody else's uh, business. It was just proving the point that it's possible. Um, and I'm not grumbling. I enjoyed the time doing it. The whole market changed um, from the solar industry. They cut the tariffs. They cut the subsidies. The um, the areas that the solar was predominantly selling in um, got hammered, um, hammered in the sense that they started to make the selling open to anybody. It was a free for all. That's when we started rolling back. Because I'll be honest with you, I don't like cold calling. I don't like people phoning me up asking me if I want something, even if I had looked at something online. Um, I prefer emails because I look at it when I've got time, not when they want to call me. So it would make me a hypocrite to continue on that venture. Um, but also, since then, um, the laws changed relating to things like auto dialers. Laws changed relating to prosecutions because companies are being prosecuted in the US and UK now. Um, it's simply not a good business model. It was then. It isn't today, and moving into something new takes time, but also it, it takes developing a whole new industry because most of the guys are focused on telemarketing. They're, they're salespeople. So to move into customer service, it's a slightly different setup, but often having hardcore salespeople, they want the sales. Um, so they, they want to move to another center but that does sales. Um, inbound is a bit harder to get. You've got bigger players in the, the mix, uh, companies like Wipro, um, and you need to get your first big clients before you start being able to develop the business. Quite simply, I couldn't do that from the Philippines. Companies go to the Philippines with those contracts. They don't start in the Philippines. They're already established. You've got Indian companies moving to the Philippines um, that are already selling their services, like Wipro. They, they are already a business in India that has already got this business from the West. It's a bit like um, getting the banking system. Uh, you know, in a, 
everybody was outsourcing HSBC and everything was going to India, etc. Um, they go with the bigger companies already set up or they build their own operations there. What you need to do is actually get some of that smaller business, which is more focusing in the West because you can't get it in these countries. Why would they want to outsource it unless you, they, it's something they don't want themselves? Um, so it takes time, but also you've got to have the right skills. It's a complete change of business. Um, so that's why we stopped doing it. It's quite simply not viable. They, everything had changed. Um, but we did earn good money. It's like you move on to the next thing. It's like any business. And I, you know, if you're selling a service of somebody else, if they stop selling the service, unless you can replace it with another service, you're not, you can't sell anything. But the whole market had changed in the sense that a lot of companies were aware that they could be prosecuted um, because of things like the auto dialers, the uh, legislation changed about prosecutions in the US, uh, legislation changed in the UK. Um, but even here in Spain, there is still people cold calling the UK, but at some point, somebody will catch up with them. Um, we were doing it while it was still legal, and quite simply, we did okay. Call it a day. That's it. Thanks for watching.